Use code SPIKEFEEDERS for 5% off at facetofacegames.com. You can shop face-to-face -face games in US dollars, Canadian dollars, or even euros, and they'll ship just about everywhere. That's code SPIKEFEEDERS at checkout at facetofacegames.com to help support the show. And we are back. Today, Elliot's in the driver's seat playing games with our patrons. Let's get right into it. First in turn order, JJ Mickey is playing Kamiz, Obscura Oculus. I'm going to be real with you. This came out in Nuka Bena Commander, and it's the first time I've seen it. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Next up, we've got Mink. He's playing Grenzo, very on brand as Mink is a huge fan of goblins. Third in turn order, Elliot is playing Akiri Thrasios. This is a four color artifact deck that focuses quite a bit on flinging Akiri. And rounding out the pod, we've got Carson playing Megatron. I just took a brief glance at the deck list and this deck is wild. It's a Mardu artifacts list that just throws haymakers. It's mono haymakers dot deck. And with that, let's get right into it. On turn one, JJ draws a card, plays a snow covered island and passes the turn. Mink draws, plays a luxury suite and passes. Elliot draws a card, plays a wooded foothills, and cracks it going to 39. He grabs a taiga. He uses the taiga to cast Gilded Goose, making a food token, then passes to Carson. Carson draws, plays a Savai Triome tapped, and passes. JJ starts off turn two by drawing, playing a snow-covered swamp, and casting Talisman of Dominance, then passes the turn. Mink draws, plays a Sulphurous Springs, then taps it taking one, and casts Granzo Dungeon Warden, X equals zero. And that's it for Mink, he passes to Elliot. Elliot untaps, draws, and plays an island. He casts Nature's Lore, grabbing Tropical Island. He eats a food with his goose to make a red, and casts Reckless Fireweaver, then passes. Carson draws, plays a swamp, and casts Lightning Greaves. That's it for Carson, he passes to JJ. JJ untaps, draws, plays a snow-covered plains, and casts Graveblade Marauder. It resolves, and he passes to Mink. Mink untaps, draws a card, and plays a mountain. He moves to combat, attacking Elliot with Grenzo. There's no blocks, and Elliot takes two. In his post-combat main, Mink taps three and casts Goblin Sharpshooter, then passes the turn. Elliot untaps, draws a card, and plays a plateau. He casts Storm the Vault. He moves to combat, attacking Carson for one. There's no blocks, and the damage triggers Storm the Vault to make a treasure. The treasure entering triggers Reckless Fireweaver, so everyone takes one. Then Elliot passes. Carson untaps and draws a card. He plays a Plains and casts Felden of the Third Path. He equips the Lightning Greaves to Felden. He moves to combat, attacking Elliot for two. Elliot's got no blocks, so he takes two. Then Carson passes. On turn four, JJ untaps and draws a card. He plays a snow-covered island, then immediately moves to combat. He attacks Elliot with the Graveblade Marauder. There's no block, so Elliot takes one. In his second main, he casts Cephalid Constable, then passes the turn. Mink untaps, draws a card, and plays Phyrexian Tower. He activates Grenzo, flipping the bottom card. It's a Judith, Scourge Diva. She's a 2-2, so she goes directly into play. Mink casts Goblin Bushwhacker, Kicked. This buffs his board and they gain haste. He activates Goblin Sharpshooter, targeting Cephalid Constable. It dies and this triggers the Sharpshooter to untap it. He moves to combat, swinging Grenzo, Judith, and the Bushwhacker at Elliot for 10. Elliot's got no blocks and he takes 10. Mink passes. Feeling a little bit of pressure, Elliot untaps and draws a card. He plays a Sacred Foundry tapped. He moves to combat and swings the Reckless Fireweaver at Carson. There's no blocks, so Carson takes one. This triggers Storm the Vault, creating a treasure, which triggers the Fireweaver, and everyone takes one. In his second main, he casts Thrasios, then follows it up by casting Akiri. With nothing else going on, he passes the turn. Carson untaps, draws, plays a Plains, and casts Megatron for his more than meets the eye cost. He equips Lightning Greaves to Megatron and moves to combat. He swings Megatron at Mink. On attack, Megatron triggers and Carson sacrifices Lightning Greaves to deal two damage to Goblin Bushwhacker, killing it. Because it deals excess damage, it's directed at Mink's face and Carson converts Megatron. When the Bushwhacker dies, it triggers Judith and the Goblin Sharpshooter. Mink elects to resolve the Judith trigger first, pointing it at Gilded Goose. With the untapped trigger on the stack, he activates Sharpshooter, targeting the Goose, killing it. This triggers Sharpshooter again, untapping it. With the original untap still on the stack, Mink activates it, targeting Carson to deal one damage to him, then resolves the original untap trigger. Mink has no blocks, taking seven combat damage in addition to the one damage from the excess damage trigger. In post-combat main, Megatron triggers, converting it back to its vehicle side. 
He also makes 8 colorless mana because Mink has taken 8 damage so far this turn. He uses 7 of it to cast Cauldra Complete. It enters and makes a germ because it's a living weapon. Carson then passes the turn. On turn 5, JJ untaps, draws a card, plays a planes, and casts Night Veil Spectre. He passes the turn. Mink untaps, draws a card, and pays 2 to activate Grenzo, putting Goblin Ringleader into play. When it enters the battlefield, he reveals the top 4 cards of his library. These are Blood Crypt, Cavern of Souls, Path of Ancestry, and a Dockside Extortionist. The lands all go to the bottom, and Dockside goes to his hand. He casts the Dockside, and the count is at 6, so Mink makes 6 treasures. He cracks all 6, casting Muxus. This resolves, and he reveals the top 6 cards. These are Mountain, Command Tower, Another Mountain, Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, Another Mountain, and Mog War Marshal. Mog War Marshal enters the battlefield, and it triggers its own ability to make a goblin. Mink moves to combat, attacking Elliot with the ringleader. There's no blocks, and Elliot takes four, so Mink passes. Elliot untaps and draws a card. He plays Kazul's Cliff tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Carson with Akiri. There's no blocks, and Carson takes two. This triggers Storm the Vault again to make a treasure, which triggers Reckless Fireweaver, so everyone takes one. Then he passes. Carson untaps, draws a card, and plays Dross Forge Bridge tapped. He moves to combat, attacking Mink with Megatron. The attack triggers Megatron, and he sacrifices Cauldra Complete, targeting Hobgoblin Bandit Lord for 7 damage. The germ dies to state-based abilities, triggering Goblin Sharpshooter. Mink activates it, targeting Carson for 1 damage. Then he untaps the Sharpshooter, and activates it for another 1 damage to Carson. The Hobgoblin dies, and 4 excess damage gets directed to Mink's face due to Megatron's ability. This converts Megatron, and triggers Judith and the Sharpshooter. Mink points the Judith trigger at the newly converted Megatron, and blocks with Dockside Extortionist. When the damage happens, Dockside Extortionist dies and triggers Judith and the Sharpshooter. At this point, Megatron already has 3 damage marked on it, so Mink uses the Judith trigger and activates Sharpshooter to finish it off. Megatron dies, and this untaps the Sharpshooter. Then Carson passes. On turn 6, JJ untaps, draws a card, and casts Military Intelligence. He moves to combat, attacking Elliot with the Night Vale Spectre for 2 and Carson for 1 with Graveblade Marauder. This triggers Military Intelligence, and JJ draws a card. There's no blocks, so Elliot takes 2 and Carson takes 1, then another 1 from the Graveblade Marauder trigger. The damage also triggers Night Vale Spectre, so Elliot exiles Riverglide Pathway. JJ elects to play it as his land for turn on the blue side. JJ casts Dam, overloading it. Mink responds by activating Sharpshooter, targeting JJ for 1 damage. Elliot also responds by activating Thrasios, scrying one to the top, then he reveals Hoarding Ogre and draws it. Elliot activates Thrasios again, scrying one to the top, then reveals Finale of Devastation and draws it as well. The dam resolves, and Judith triggers six times. Mink points all the triggers at JJ Mickey. The Goblin War Marshal makes a goblin on the way out, and JJ passes. Mink untaps, draws a card, and plays a mountain. He sacks his goblin token to Phyrexian Tower to make two black and cast Goblin Matron. This enters the battlefield and triggers its own ability, so Mink searches up Skirk Prospector and puts it in his hand. He casts the Skirk Prospector, then follows it up by foretelling one card, and passes the turn. Elliot untaps, draws a card, and casts the Hoarding Ogre that we saw earlier. He moves to his end step and Carson cycles Ash Barons to search up a mountain. Carson untaps, draws a card, plays that mountain, and casts Megatron then passes the turn. Kicking off turn 7, JJ untaps and draws a card. He plays a Swamp, then he casts an Ancient Brass Dragon and passes. Mink untaps and draws a card. He sacks the Goblin Matron to Phyrexian Tower to make 2 black, then sacks Skirk Prospector to its own ability to make red. He casts Haunting Voyage. This returns all goblins from his graveyard to the battlefield. This triggers a lot of things, so here's the order that everything's gonna happen. First the Goblin Ringleader, then Muxus, then Goblin Matron, then Dockside Extortionist, then Mog War Marshal. The Ringleader reveals Metallic Mimic, Goblin Crater Maker, a Swamp, and Grenzo Havoc Razor. Muxus reveals Swamp, Urborg, Chandra Torch of Defiance, Boggart Harbinger, Goblin Trash Master, and Pyre of Heroes. Goblin Matron allows Mink to search up Goblin Chieftain and put it in his hand. The Dockside count is at 5, so Mink makes 5 treasures. Mog War Marshal enters and makes a Goblin Token. Mink casts Goblin Chieftain, then casts Grenzo Havoc Razor. He sacks the Mog War Marshal to Skirk Prospector to make a red, and activates Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, targeting Ancient Brass Dragon to deal it 18 damage. 
On the way out, the Goblin War Marshal makes a 1-1 Goblin. Mink misses the Sharpshooter triggers here off of the three creatures dying, but it doesn't end up making a difference. He moves to combat, swinging lethal at JJ and Carson, and 5 damage at Elliot. Still in Declare Attackers, Carson casts Ancient Stone Idol for free. Carson blocks the Goblin Chieftain with the Ancient Stone Idol. Elliot takes 5, JJ dies, and Carson takes 27. The Goblin Chieftain dies. Grenzo Havoc Razor triggers, and he goads the Ancient Stone Idol and exiles the top 5 cards of Carson's library. They are Perforos, Sojourner's Companion, Vandal Blast, Blood for the Blood God, and Dreamstone Hedron. He exiles Phyrexian Metamorph from Elliot. Mink sacrifices three goblins to Skirk Prospector to cast the Metamorph, having it enter as a copy of Muxus. State-based actions get checked, and he lets the Metamorph copy die. He reveals the top six cards of his library to the Muxus trigger. They are Anti's Hovel, Path of Ancestry, Ashnod's Altar, Command Tower, Ancient Tomb, and a Mountain. Big whiff. Mink sacrifices Dockside, Goblin Matron, and Goblin Ringleader to Skirk Prospector to make three red. The Grenzo trigger that exiled the cards allows him to use mana as though it were mana of any color to cast Blood for the Blood God. He discards Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Chaos Warp, and Goblin Crater Maker and draws eight cards. Elliot and Carson each take eight damage and Carson dies, leaving Elliot at five. Mink plays Goblin Burrows as his land for turn, then sacrifices Boggart Harbinger and Grenzo for two red to cast Pashalik Mons. He then sacrifices the Sharpshooter for a red, and this triggers Pashalik to deal one to Elliot. He casts Gamble, he searches up a card, and discards Vampiric Tutor from his hand. He sacrifices Trashmaster, Bandit Lord, Muxus, and Prospector to make four red. This triggers Pashalik Mons four times, and Mink resolves the first three, dealing three damage to Elliot. With the last trigger on the stack, Mink goes for style points and casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Pashalik Mons, his last goblin. This kills it, triggering its own ability, and deals the last damage to Elliot's face. With that, Mink wins the game. What a game. You can tell from the declarations of attack early that everybody thought that Elliot was the threat, and to be honest, he probably was. But you cannot ignore goblins. Once they reach this critical mass, it's pretty much game over. Huge thanks to JJ, Carson, and Mink for putting up with Elliot for a full hour and 17 minutes. If you want to get games in with the Spike Feeders, make sure you go check out our Patreon. If you're already a patron, head over to the Webcam Games channel in our Discord. And with that, we'll catch you next time.